Okay, my outstanding friends, we are going to start talking today about Schumann resonance, resonance, the atmosphere that we live in, and why we have these Schumann resonance frequencies, what gravity is, a whole bunch of stuff. And it all relates to these particles. And that right there, my friend, is dark matter and gravity. And they have seen them at CERN and Fermilab. This is Fermilab's picture, not mine. We have seen them in our light experiments. Now I'm going to explain to you, light comes to us from the sun. I mean, obviously. What is it made of? Right there. What does it do? Let's talk about it. Okay, my friends, once again, this is wrong. It says the Schumann resonance are set of spectral peaks. Yes, I agree with that. Extremely low frequency, yes, I agree with that. They are push-to-shove patterns. And they are a portion of the Earth's electromagnetic field, I agree with that. Schumann resonance are global electromagnetic resonances, I agree with that. Generated and excited by lightning discharges, I do not agree with that. Lightning is generated by the scrub of the outermost Schumann resonance push-to-shove field. That's the magnetic field, and as that outer one sh scrubs, it forces electrons in, creating lightning discharges. They say it forms in this cavity formed by the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. Well, the ionosphere is the area where our electrons scrub against the incoming electrons and particles from space. That's what creates our magnetic field, and they wrap right around and come back to Earth. They don't just go away into space. Global warming is not just because it can't get out. It's because it's trapped in here, and the harder we scrub, it's like putting more of a load on a motor. Okay, look at this now. This is what they claim is the Schumann resonance. Now watch what it does. They say it starts forming in here, and then they just start creating all kind of waves inside this envelope. Well, to some degree, that's partially correct. But it's because they're getting slammed from the outside, not because they're from the inside. All right, and they just push to shove, push to shove, push to shove, shown it a million times. It's identical, identical to having a motor like this. This, if you turn it goes click, 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 click. We're spinning that field inside against the field that's outside. Identical to this, 100% identical. Well, what happens when you put a load on a motor? It gets warm. You spin it, goes, eh, everything's fine, everything's just going nice, and all of a sudden you go, rawr, you go rawr. what happens? You get a hell of a lot of heat, exactly like this. How did we put a load on the earth? We expanded the envelope. The bigger it gets, the harder it scrubs. The harder it scrubs, the heat builds. That's what we did to force this to turn into a hot motor, and that's what we have right now is a hot motor. Okay, this is about the whole shooting match that you need to see right now. These are the layers of our atmosphere. The troposphere is right down close, and the stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. Now, look at these temperatures. Down on Earth, we're around 100 degrees now, let's say. As you go out to the stratosphere, it goes to minus 56 centigrade then minus 86, then minus 86 again, then it goes up to 1200, way out here, the exosphere, which is basically right out here where the light hits the most upper region of our magnetic field. All right, And that's exactly what it is, our magnetic field right up there. Now, now you come into the Schumann resonance. It pushes, it shoves back, it pushes, it shoves back, it pushes, it shoves back. That's what I say, push to shove. Then that white particle comes flying down, it pushes against this one, that pushes back. Pushes down, pushes back, pushes down, pushes back. Guess what they are? 6.5 frequency change from the first push to the second push, to the next push to the next push. All the way down, four of them in a row at 6.5. And then when you go from this one to the Earth, it jumps up to 7.83. What does that mean? It means that all of the ones coming down were coming down at this frequency here, 6.5, then another 6.5, and another 6.5. That's the change in frequency of the concussion. Now, at the Earth, though, instead of being pushed down and pushed back, pushed down, pushed back, pushed down, pushed back, it's pushed down and it gets sucked down to the Earth. 
This is gravity. So all of them are 6.5. At the Earth, it goes and it sucks it right down. So now we're at 7.83. That's the story. Now, this is extremely low frequency. I mean, this 7.83 is 7.83 waves in one second. That's Hertz. And a wave is just a sine wave. It goes up, down, and back up to the center line again. Now, so what are we looking at? We're looking at light particles, we're looking at electrons, we're looking at dust, we're looking at impact. They call that the bow shock of where the Earth is slamming in. Because not only are we spinning on our axis, we're being dragged through the solar system on the arm of the Milky Way. And not only that, we're spinning around the sun. A lot of interaction at this particular zone right here where we scrub through the ionosphere. I'm, uh, well, it's the ionosphere, really. It's way out here is where the action is. Now, you see all this field waves? These electrons don't leave. They come back down to the bottom of the Earth. They go out and they come back. They, they can't get out. They're being pushed in. And that's why they're getting sucked to the Earth. The Earth has more dark matter, as far as I can determine, than it has the white matter. These little red ones I'm calling the white matter, the black ones are muons and dark matter. They are gravity. Now, let's get a little deeper. As I said, this is basically it. The sun shines to us. Now, let me show you this just very quickly, just show you this little insert here. All right, what does that say? It says the surface of the sun is 10,000 degrees. Can you see that? Yes, you can. All right, so the surface of the sun is 10,000 degrees. Well, guess what happens where the sun radiates outward and it hits the non-vacuum of space. It crushes its atmosphere and turns into a million degrees, just like we went from 56 degrees up to 1,200 degrees at our outside scrub, which is our outside right here. It's 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a hell of a lot of heat, and it's coming back down, and the magnetic fields will not let it get away. Heat is nothing more than free electrons, extra electrons. When you heat your room up, you're forcing extra electrons in. That's all you're doing. And when you let them drain out, they will go to find wherever they want to be accepted more. And they ex get accepted more where it is colder. Everybody knows that just instinctively, but they can't understand it because they don't understand electron flood theory. Right now, everything here that I'm talking about, they don't understand, not a single word of it. They don't understand why our, our atmosphere is heating up, it's scrubbing. It's not because carbon dioxide is capturing heat. It is basically because it's expanded our atmosphere. The problem is, is originally the atmosphere was out here. Well, as we burn things, it's growing like this. As it gets higher and higher out here, we get more and more scrub. There's nothing we can do about it until we reduce the amount of emissions of gases. That's any kind of vapor. Any vapor from a solid turning into a gas creates huge amounts of, of um, increase in our atmosphere. And that's what it is, it's the increase in atmosphere. That's why there's so much scrub. As this thing turns, originally it was kind of soft because the atmosphere is down here. Well, now it's getting really packed. And now it's ripping through here, turning all kinds of floods and hurricanes and tornadoes. And Now, here's what's going to happen. It's warming up, so what's going to happen? The oceans are going to release more liquid, more vapor. That vapor gets into the atmosphere and when it collides, as the Earth goes this way, the atmosphere crushes into land masses which are above, which what does that do? It makes a compression. Compression is condensation. Condensation creates water. What's going to happen? Torrential floods here, torrential floods here, and absolute dryness in the middle. When you compress the atmosphere, which you're going to do, it goes this way and it's going to hit, the atmosphere is going to push up here and it's going to go, Ugh! rain, phew, tornadoes, hurricanes, all kinds of violent, rainy weather. It's all gone by the time it gets to here. There's no more. 
And then the way the, the jet streams work, it wraps back around and comes over. So it's coming back off of the water elegantly where it should just water this. But by the time it gets past the edge here, it's already, again, it's dry again, so there's nothing here. We're in trouble. We are in deep trouble. And the only way we can get out of it is electron flood theory and using free energy. And I just showed you we can accelerate light and we can create enormous amounts of supposedly trillions of electron volts by separating the black from the white. And we can do that, and we have done it. And I need to look that immediately. All right, there's a solar eclipse. All these particles are leaving. They're not coming back to the sun. They're going out to do their job. Ours come back. The sun is too big to come back. At a certain point, it loses its mass. And here's what's happening. These are the solar particles. You see OH, O's and H's? This is all over. They're everywhere. And right here, they combine to make the waters below separated from the light, which is above, which is also literally a liquid. This is the scrub zone, only it used to be here. Now it's out here somewhere. We're scrubbing like unbelievable. That's what our heat, turmoil, hurricanes, floods, compression areas, droughts, all coming from this interaction of expansion of gases. All right, this is really difficult for you to understand. Most professors don't understand this. Millikan's oil drop experiment proved two things. It proved, one, that every electron had a discrete amount of energy called one electron volt. And the way he determined that it was an electron, he couldn't actually see one electron, but he kept checking one after another after another, all these tiny little electron charged particles, and they always ended up having a change of electricity. It's 1.9 something mega electron joules. It's, it's, it's some big huge negative number, a tiny little number. And he said, it, it's always the same number. It changes like every time it's five. It's five, it's five, it's five. There's no 4.2, 4.9, 6.8. It's five, five, five. So no matter how many electrons he has, if it's always a, a multiple of five, he knows that every electron must be five. I agree with this. I, I agree with this experiment 100%. Now, what does that tell you? At that point, they started to bu build the... Mil uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Mendeleev's uh, periodic table. And they said hydrogen is the smallest possible stable atom. And it has to have one electron in orbit around its nucleus. So they said the nucleus is a proton. Well, the nucleus is not one proton. One proton Let's take, give me one second. All right, this would be one proton. All right, so hydrogen would have one proton and one tiny, tiny, tiny little electron. Well, it's not the case. It is this, which is 1,835 electrons, and then one out here. So they are made in multiples that way. Now, if you can separate the black from the white, which is these particles right here, which is these particles right here, the muon neutrino, which is the black fixed particle from the white point particle, the electron neutrino, which we did. They were fixed. We separated them right there. That is absolute 100% proof. And that is absolute 100% proof of what Fermilab and CERN put out to say this is what we want to find. And I found them, the muon neutrino, the electron neutrino. And here they are right above. Right, and here they are, concussing at a venturi and actually dividing. The black divided from the white, right here. Only the white was allowed through. And then the black came back and reattached. So we created the exact same particles Fermilab wants. Now, they claim the electron voltage, and I can tell you right now, a hell of a lot of increase in energy. I mean, look at from here, almost nothing, to here, uh, literally a subatomic nuclear explosion. And that's exactly what it is, just like an atomic bomb, only very, very micro-scaled. All right, you saw that splash of red just turn into brilliant white. Visible light in electron volts 
only takes like less than five electron volts, 3.5 electron volts on the high end. You get down to alpha radiation, which will kill you. You're up around 10 million electron volts. Well, guess what? Muons are cosmic ray energies, and you're in a thousand trillion volts, which you, I showed you that extremely energetic ray. And not only that, we can control it. We're not just having to accidentally hit each other and explode. We, have, we are able to squirt it onto a receiver. We should be able to get this trillions of electron volt, at least part of that, through some kind of a solar collector. Because that's all it is, is solar, solar radiation. It's, it's cosmic ray energy. It's particles coming from the sun. And they even say that. And if you can break them, which we did, you end up getting a trillion electron volts instead of one. That's free energy. And if we don't do something within a few, I'm, literally, I'm telling you, within a few weeks, we're screwed. It's just run out of control. And it's not going to turn around for nothing. The only way you turn it around is to reduce the amount of impact that we are having against our space particles. Now, I normally don't get into religion and all that stuff. I show what I show. And, and what I'm showing is, shows that the things that were written in the ancient texts, Ovid and Hesiod, and in the Bible, all that, there was giants on earth. I have them here. They're DNA tested, CAT scanned, the whole nine yards. They're here for anybody to examine, and they refuse to examine. And it's people that are in high places that are starting to talk about the theory of everything and all of this stuff. Now, I came here to watch Don Lincoln from Fermilab talk about knowing God's thoughts. And up to this point in it, there has been nothing about God. It's all been about grand unified theory and quantum gravity. Now, how is he relating that to God? I don't know. But in the next video, we're going to find out if there is any relationship he brings to God at all. Because I don't see any God in science, to be honest with you. It's all... We all developed from slime, and everything that they talked about in the ancient texts is all hysterical nonsense. Velikowski was destroyed, literally destroyed, by academics. And I, I wrote a book about him to, to keep his memory alive and bring him back. I will resurrect that man, because he was the one that was right, and he's been proven right, and they still defile him to this day.